Amen. We need to be effective for God. I ought to be preaching this on a Sunday morning, right? Amen. Uh, we need to be effective in service. Uh, in order to be in effective in service, uh, I uh, done a little, just a little, a few things there in Mark uh, chapter eight, I believe it is. Uh, just kind of as I was thinking this afternoon, um, Proverbs 29 and 18, uh, effectiveness in service, we need to be envisioned, uh, uh, amen, uh, 29 and 18, there, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he, um, happy is he. What does he do? He keeps the law. Why? Because the law gives him vision. Amen. Right? I mean, if you look in that, if you look at that, uh, I mean, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So the word of God keeps us happy, but it gives us a vision. Amen. We need to be effective in the service of God. Amen. I'm going to give you just something really, really simple here. You will never do more than you vision. You will never do more than your vision. You will never do more than your vision. You won't. I mean, to try to achieve our vision is a great thing in itself, just trying to achieve our vision. Um, but to do more, we, we, will, we won't. I mean, we just won't put ourselves doing it uh, we, we want to apply ourselves we have to see a man something happening and go after it and chase after it uh, and and I wrote down a few things if if you are a teacher you need to see your classroom full you need to see it you got to envision it you know we, we we can't get there if we don't have a vision for that. We have to have a vision for that. Uh, where though there is no vision, the people perish. Uh, and I mean, you know, and even, even you know, myself, us as a church body, uh, we need to have a vision to see the church filled. We've seen it filled many times. But we need to have a vision. We need to keep a vision to see the church filled. That needs to be our vision. And in order to be in effective in service, I have to have a vision before me. I was talking to somebody here a while back, and they was talking about ministry and everything and talking about what God wanted them to do, and they feel like they're called to preach and everything. And I'm like, man, you know, people just, that we dream these great old big dreams, and you need to dream big and everything. But you have to understand there's so many things that we can do. Uh, as a deacon, I can say as a deacon, as a teacher, uh, what you have is a church within a church. That's what you have. Uh, as a deacon, I have so many families assigned to me, and I work those families. I help shepherd those families. So I'm a church within a church. If I have a class and I'm doing a, I need to be effective in service. I need to see my class full. I need to see. So I have the ability uh, to work and, and do a church within a church. That's that's mine. That's what God gave me to shepherd. Uh, amen. And I know my pastor, he used to talk about under shepherd. I'm an under shepherd of God. And, you know, and, and so we have many under shepherds, but we're shepherds. And even still at that, God gives us our group of people, our group of children, whatever God puts us over. And what we need to do is, is get a vision and see our classroom filled. Uh, we need to see our church filled. Uh, that needs to be the vision that we have. We need to be effective in service. Uh, see things in, in, in heart or they will never become reality. If you can't see it with your heart, if you can't see it in your heart, it's never, ever going to become a reality. I mean, uh, 
the, the seats being full. I mean, if my heart ain't going after it, if my heart's not in it, it the, the seats will never be filled. If, if your heart's not in your class, if, you know what I'm saying? If your heart's not there, you will never see that class full. I mean, you know, people's got to know your heart is in it. Uh, uh, I remember early on uh, talking with young ministers and everything, and I, and I would tell them, you know, give them your heart and you'll never, ever go wrong. People have to see your heart. The children have to see your heart. The adults in your class have to see your heart. They got to know your heart is in it. Uh, if we don't have enthusiasm about what we're doing, you think anyone's going to have enthusiasm to come into your class or to come into our church? You think we're ever going to be effective if we don't have enthusiasm? Do you think someone is going to serve your God if your heart's not in it? How can we ever be effective for God if our heart's not in it? And, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, we love God and things like that, but to say that, you know, we really love God. If I really love God, then I have a testimony about how great God is and what God has done in my life and how God is moving in my church and people that I've seen get saved and things that I've seen happen. I mean, when's the last time you went out and told somebody, you know, man, I'll tell you what, we just had a blowout service and, man, somebody come up and they got saved at the altar and God is so awesome, you know, uh, if people don't see your enthusiasm and don't see your heart in it, their heart will never, ever, ever be in it. How do you expect somebody to chase something that you won't chase yourself? Uh, amen. Now, this is some pretty good stuff. Mark chapter 8 is pretty good stuff to me. It's it's just what goes on in my crazy mind. And uh, as I was looking at it, I really liked it. Mark chapter number 8, as I was thinking about... Uh, you know, without vision, um, we will perish. And then, I, you know, you see people that's teaching in classes. You see people that's, uh, you know, working on a deacon board that's doing things. And, you know, uh, I, so many times, and I've heard so much, and it's just things really trip me out I, uh, through the years. Uh, I, you know, I've heard so many times, well, the church is just not the same. Uh, I, I remember hearing that at the White House. 25 years ago, and, and guess what? It has still not changed. People will still tell you the same thing. And and what I've come to find out many times, it's, it's not the church. The church ain't changed. To say that the church can't, why, why do I come to church? To serve God. So for me to say that the church has changed is to say that God has changed. Okay? It's to say that God's changed. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I can walk in the door and I can get my shout on no matter who's around me. I can praise and worship no matter who's around me. You know why? Because God didn't change. He didn't shift. He hadn't become something else. He hadn't lost his power. He's still God. You know what I'm saying? So I can still come in and worship him because he's God. Amen. That's why I come to church, to worship him because he's God. I am absolutely persuaded, 100%, amen, that I'm going to church, amen, and you're going to church, and the church across the street, they're going to church with people, and the church on every corner in Mount Holly, because either we have a beer joint or a church, you know, but not anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, they're, they're getting to more to where they're having the alcohol places here in Mount Holly, but it really is more in Charlotte, I guess, but uh, I mean... Uh, I, I, I'm just persuaded, amen, that uh, we, amen, need to be chasing God. We need to be following after God, looking to God, amen, keeping our hours on, on God. Because, But the thing is, uh, the, the church hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. We have changed. We have changed. It's, it's me. It's not, it's, not, it's not the church. It's not God. God has not changed. He's not faltered. He's not failed. Amen. Uh, Mark chapter number 8, it said, uh, uh, Jesus had done the loaves and the fishes and all of that, and uh, at the end of it, uh, it it's, uh, they take up 12 baskets full. And, uh, and, and when the seven among the 4,000 
Uh, and when the seven among the 4,000, verse number 20, how many baskets full of fragments? And they said seven. Okay, seven. Uh, uh, verse number 19, and I break the five loaves among the 5,000, and how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They sent to him 12. So they took up 12 at one, seven at another, right? Okay, when he feeds the people. And uh, he said unto them, how is it that you do not understand? And he's just blown away because he's done so many miracles and so many things in front of people, amen, and they still don't understand. And, and you know, people, we've served God for years. Has God been good for years to us? I, why would all of a sudden I think God has changed? And it just ain't the same. God has not changed. He has not. He's still God overall. He's still superior. It said, and he cometh to uh, uh, Bethsaida, and, and they bring a blind man unto him, and he besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. Uh, amen. Um, and, and sometimes God needs to isolate us from everything else. We get our eyes on all the wrong. Without a vision, the people perish. And sometimes we get our eyes on the wrong things. We, we don't have the, uh, the vision that we've had before. We can't see like man used to. Man, I could man, I could just see the house being full. I could see them worshiping, amen, you know, up and down the aisles. Man, I could see them. I, just, I could see God moving in the church. And then, you know, some 10 years later, well, we just don't have that same vision no more. And what God did is he took this blind man Amen. He, and he took him to the side and he isolated him from all the, and, and I wrote down, disturbing influences. <coughs> because this is what's happened after we start serving God for a while. We have all of these disturbing influences, things that influence us. And, and we look and we see bad and we see this or that, you know. And I'll tell you, you know, and like I say, I'm persuaded that every church around here, amen, goes to church with hypocrites. I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. You know what? I'm fully persuaded that all of these church go, people go to church with thieves in the church. I'm persuaded that all of these people go to church with liars in the church. Right? That's a bad thing. No, that's a good thing. That's where we need them at is in the church. That blows my mind. I don't want to go to church with hypocrites. Where do you think they're going to get saved at? I don't want to go to church with a thief. Where do you think they're going to get saved at? I don't want to go to church with liars. Where do you think they're going to get saved at? I don't want to go to church with an addict. Where do you think? I mean, Lord have mercy. Amen. Anyway, uh, but and we get to looking at everything. Uh, our vision gets messed up because we see all these things. And, and God wanted to isolate him from disturbing influences. And sometimes we have all that. And I'm going to tell you, uh, one thing is that there's plenty of people that will come and whisper in your ear and tell you how bad everything is. That really, they'll come and they'll tell you, you know, this wasn't no good, that wasn't no good. They ought to do it this way. They should have done it that way. They should have listened to me. I can't understand why they don't do it like this, you know, and everything. But I, that's what Jesus wants to do. Amen. And listen, for us to be effective in service, we have to get with Jesus sometime, amen, and get isolated away from disturbing influences. Everybody ought to say amen on that one. We need to get away sometime from all the disturbing influences because it help, it makes us where uh, we lose our effectiveness for God because so many things get to bothering us and get under our skin. Amen. Listen, Jesus takes him to the side. Amen. Because And, and what does Jesus do? Jesus is doing something here. Uh, Jesus dispels darkness and introduces light. 
listen, I mean, I've, I've, I've had so many influences. I've had so many that I can't see like I used to see. And so I've got all of these disturbing influences, amen, and I need Jesus to come in, amen, to clear the darkness out of the way, to help me see the goodness and help see how good God is and how good the church really is and what's really going on that's awesome. I mean, how I, this, is, this is my thing is, you know, you walk into church and people do, you know, because they come in, they examine you and they check in everything about you and they're finding out, you know, what reasons that uh, you know, we're to do this, what reasons they shouldn't come to church here or whatever, you know, if we fit up to their standard or whatever, you know. Uh, what we're to do is just have a sheet back there. Hey, hold on before you come in the door. Fill out this sheet. We want to we wanna examine you and your life and see if you need to come through the church and be a part of our church because we're really not too sure about you. Your tie's crooked. You know what I'm saying? You didn't shine those shoes, you know, because they're coming in and they're saying, man, you know, they got a couple cracks in the walls. and they, they, Oh, man, you know, I mean, they could afford to do this. They ought to do this different. I don't think I'm coming back here. Dude, I looked at you, and I didn't think I wanted to hang out with you either. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know. But anyway, uh, uh, we we kind of we need Jesus to come into our life, Amen, and dispel the darkness and introduce the light. And, and I can sit in a church for years, and I can look and see everything that's wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? And all the problems. And, and I, I preached about this before. We, we watched a, a movie years ago, uh, amen. And, and if you see a, a, a place of need, feel it. If you see a place of need, feel it. Don't sit there and talk junk about everybody and say nobody's doing this and they should be doing that and why ain't they doing it this way. Dude, if you see the problem, fix it. Feel it. Either you're part of the uh, solution or you're part of the problem. If all you're doing is downing everything, you are a problem. Everybody say amen. Amen. You're part of the problem. Okay, it said, uh, he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And, and when he had spit on his hands and put his hands upon him, he asked him how saw, uh, if he saw all. Do you see anything? You know what? Now, you know, in this church and every church, we're to bring all the teachers in to say, do you see anything? Do you have a vision for the church? Do you have a vision for your class? <laughs> Do you have a vision for the people that surround you? In your Do you see anything? I would really like to do that. So wouldn't that be cool? Write down what you see. And let's compare it. Let's see where we're at. I mean, because God has called us into a service. He's called us over a vineyard. He's called us to work his ministry. What do you see? And that's what Jesus asked him. He said, what do you see? And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And that fascinated me. That tells me he has seen before. I would say this man probably seen before because he was able to describe what he saw. I see men as trees. So you know what I wrote? He saw imperfection. And right now, if we wrote down everything we see, you know, how do you see the church? I could just imagine, have I not preached this message, I could just not imagine what would have been wrote. They would have been 27 things wrong and five right. It really, really, absolutely. You know why? Because we would see all the imperfect. What happened to this dude? <laughs> Jesus spit, slapped hands on him, anointed him, to the healer. Uh-oh, the healing balm of Gilead. The one that said, I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. The one that Isaiah wrote about said, by his stripes we're healed. Laid hands on him. 
We go into church all the time under the power of God. What do you see? I see men walking around. All I see is a bunch of people that won't do right, won't act right, won't live right. Oh, now we sound like church folk. That's exactly right. That, everybody say amen because that, that's how it is. I, I see men like trees. And that's just awesome. They, he saw imperfection. He didn't see men as men. He seen men with problems. You know what they were doing? They were moving around. That's how he could distinguish. They wasn't standing still. They looked like stumps. I see men as trees. How, how do I distinguish between them being men and trees? They are moving. They're doing something. So what you're doing then is seeing all the imperfections of everyone that's doing something. Everybody say amen. That's what people do when they're sitting in the pew mad about everything. They see everybody that's working and they see everything wrong with what they're doing. That is wild. How can you be effective in service when all you're doing is looking at everything that everybody's doing wrong? And that's what happens so many times in service. We should be seeing the church full. Man, I'm going to tell you, I shouldn't be looking in imperfections in you and seeing you messed up. I need to be seeing you winning souls. I need to see you, amen, filling the pews up because you have the ability. But I can Elmer Towns said they might be a two, but we see them as a ten. We give them something to strive for. But so many times when we're looking at people, we see them as twos. And what we see is, uh, I said, I see men as trees walking. We see their imperfections. That's what we see in people so many times. I'm going to tell you, you'll never have a healthy classroom seeing imperfections all the time. You'll never have a healthy church if all you concentrate on is imperfections. We will never have a healthy church. Amen. Our heart will never bring to reality the vision that God has given us if all we see is imperfections in everyone. We got to, listen, they're imperfect. They're not perfect. They're never going to be perfect. Amen. But if, a, but if a few imperfect people will pull together, I still believe they can do a perfect thing for God. Amen. Amen. I like that. Amen. Uh, I, I looked at I like it. And it said, after that, he put his hands on his, upon his eyes again. So, so listen, what did the Lord do? He isolated them. He prayed for them. And then he said, now what do you see? I, I, still, I, all I see is imperfections. There's still hope for you, <laughs> okay? There's still hope for you. All I see is imperfections in the church. All I see is problems. All I see is problems in people. After that, he put his hands uh, again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. He could see. I mean, I believe he had seen before, and I believe he had a vision for God. I believe he had a vision for church. I believe he had a vision for his class. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about that church folk. I, I mean, you know, you could go with a man. I, I believe the man had a vision for his life. I believe a man had a vision for his family. I believe the man had vision early on in life and had lost his vision, amen, because he got to concentrating, amen, on the disturbances of life and all the problems and the issues, and he concentrated on them. They became Came giants in his life, amen, but somewhere along the line, he has to become a David and slay the giant, and I believe through Jesus here, that's what he did, he said, I, I see, I, I, he saw every man clearly, and you know what, it, it's good to say, hold on, hold on, hold on, now he's seen imperfect, he's seen them imperfect, right? Whose vision was messed up? His or the people he saw imperfect? 
whack. Oh, so what you're telling me is everybody else ain't the problem? It's me? Oh, wow. What a discovery. It really ain't all of them. It's me. It just don't feel the same. The church has changed. Hmm. Was it the people? Or was it the man that Jesus isolated and got by himself and laid hands on and changed? Hmm. According to Scripture, it was the man. It was the blind man. One time he seen it, it was awesome. It was great. I, I got that because he seen men as trees. So he knew what a man, a man looked like. And he knew what a tree looked like. But see, through all the things going on in life, he lost his vision somewhere along the way. And it never was the people's fault. It was him. It ain't everybody else's fault around you that you don't have the vision for God that you once had. It's not everybody else's fault. It's your fault. Own it. Own it. Own up to it. Pray. Seek God. So what did God do? He isolated. Get isolated with God. Get by yourself and say, God, I need you to anoint me with fresh oil. Fresh oil. That renewing me a right spirit, God. Because, God, it's not them. It's me. I, I mean, and listen, I, I, I never preached on this before. But it was pretty awesome when I got to seeing <laughs> it was the man. But see, all he seen was imperfections. When the Lord had laid hands on the first, all he seen was imperfections. He was eat up with it. Everywhere he looked, he saw guys moving. He seen people doing. But, but they didn't look like men. They didn't look right. They was imperfect. And that's all he could concentrate on was the end. If I, you know, you read right there and you stop. Just stop. What does he see? What does he see? You stop and you sit down. All he's seen was the imperfections right there. He said, man, God laid hands on me. All I see is imperfections. And everybody I'm looking at, man, I'm going to tell you, this world's just messed up. People are just messed up. And, and that's all he's seeing. Everybody, can't, man, it ain't never going to be right. I don't guess I'm ever going to see right. I don't guess it's ever going to be right. I don't think church ever going to be done right. I, it just ain't going to be done right. No, God, you need God to lay hands on you again. See, because what, what ain't right is inside of you. What ain't right is in, in you. Because when he laid hands on him again, all of a sudden, man, he could see clearly. He can say, you know what? They're men just like me. They have struggles just like me. We're all just alike. Men, you know what? If we'd pull this wagon together, instead of me thinking I'm doing it all by myself, but you're so great. We were to, I mean, you know, what we were to do is give out rewards for these great people that all they do is see imperfections in everyone else. You need a reward for being just great, fabulous. No, what we need to do is see people that's got life, that's living life, and life is hard, and quit pointing everything at them and say, listen, the problem's right here. The problem ain't everybody else around you. It is not. It never has been. It never will be. The problem's you. The problem's you. If I don't have a vision for God, the problem ain't. It's Mike Smith's fault. I've been pastoring here for 13 years. And I don't have a vision no more. It's Mike Smith's fault. <laughs> if he'd teach better in that Sunday school class, I'd have a better vision. It's Betty's fault. You know, it's Tommy's fault. No, it ain't. If I don't have a vision, it's my fault. It's my fault. Why? Because all I seen was people imperfect. That's all I've, and I, and I just threw my hands up. I, I didn't think it could get better. Amen. Acts chapter 8. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, earlier over there, uh, Philip was, uh, he was one of the deacons, and uh, he was full of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and listen, now we, we can go to church. We can be part of the church. Okay, I'm on the deacon board, you know, and everything. That's cool. But what he had was enthusiasm. What he had, in, in, us for, in order for us to be effective in service, we have to have enthusiasm. Amen? We have to have a vision, and we have to be envisioned. We have to have enthusiasm. Amen? We need to have enthusiasm. Uh, Philip, uh, one of the deacons, then Philip went down to verse number 5, Acts chapter number 8. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. He was enthusiastic. Amen? You see what I'm saying? He's like, boys, we've been having church up here for a while. I'm fixing to go down here and preach a word. You hear me? I'm going to go preach me a word. Amen. I feel the unction of the Holy Ghost to do something for God. I, I want to be, I just I just ain't going to sit here and do nothing. Amen. But I'm going to be effective. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Amen. Listen, it was in his heart. Amen. The vision that was in his heart of souls being saved, lives being changed. Amen. The vision that was in his heart became reality. How did it become reality? He got up with some enthusiasm and went and done something for God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> right. Amen. For unclean spirits crying with loud uh, voices came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsy, and uh, they that were lame were healed, amen, and I remember it being in a Baptist church in Holden Beach, and a place I probably should have, like, never been preaching at, but they come and ask me to preach, you know, the pastor was out of town, there was people from everywhere, uh, you know, and I get to go in there and preach, and I've told them, I, seen, I said, I've seen God Amen. Made the lame to walk again. I've seen God open blinded eyes. I've seen God uh, open deaf ears. Amen. And I had. Amen. Because I seen them come into church and they was dead. Amen. And God, through the power of the gospel, reached out, opened their ears up, and brought them to the altar. Amen. I've seen them lame. Amen. Where life, amen, had destroyed them. Amen. And God healed them. Amen. At the altar. Amen. And they got saved. I've seen God made the dead rise again. Amen. Because they were dead in their trespasses and sin. And God raised them up. Why? Because you have enthusiasm, amen, with your vision, amen. You've been envisioned by God. You have enthusiasm to see God do something, amen. Then what happened, amen? Then what happened? And there was great joy in the city. Why? Because somebody hit the streets. Because somebody was excited, amen. Hey, uh, Lord, <laughs> the whole attitude of the city was changed because one guy walked downtown with some enthusiasm. He changed the whole city. Why? Because he had enthusiasm. He had a vision. He had envisioned what God might do when he arrived there. And he with enthusiasm went and he preached the gospel. And God changed the whole attitude of the city. Amen. There was great joy in the city. Why? Because, amen, one man went down there with enthusiasm. We can change our job place if we're walking with enthusiasm about what God's doing. Amen. We can change Amen, our area and what's going on around us if we have some enthusiasm about what God's doing. Amen. <sighs> listen, these Christians I've seen in life, listen, whatever they got, I don't want none of it. If you're going to be that miserable as a Christian, I don't want none of your miserable old junk. I want to be around somebody that's excited about Jesus Christ who he is, what he done, amen. I don't know about you, but I was pulled out of the pits of hell. I don't know about you, but I stood under a tree and cried because I was about ready to give up on life, amen. I'm going to tell you, amen, but God, amen, changed everything. He gave back to me the years the caterpillar, the canker worm, the palmer worm had ate up and destroyed. I got it back. I mean, I mean, somebody ought to have some enthusiasm about this guy. Who wants? Uh, to be around a Christian that has no enthusiasm. Amen. 
<laughs> See, we need to write just another one, energy. <laughs> you need to have some energy about serving God. Amen? How are you supposed to do what you're doing for the Lord, Smith? With all your might, do it as unto the Lord, right? Amen? With all your might. Amen? <laughs> and, and listen, amen? <laughs> now, now listen, we, we need, I, I believe we need to be working with God with all of our might. I can do all things. By how? How are you going to do it? Who does what? You think who expects you to do it with all your might? He strengthened you. You're not moving on your own strength any longer. You are moving on his strength. Amen. He wants you to do it with all of your might. He gives you energy to be effective for him. He gives you the energy. Let me tell you what most Christians do. Y'all want to write this down. We only do what will get us by. We don't do no more. What will get us by. Amen. And listen, we only do what will get us by, and that is not filled with energy because it's enough to get us by. Amen. I can do, but listen, wow, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. But we half heartedly do what God called us to do. We do enough to get us by, and that without energy. Amen. I believe we need to put some energy into what God has called us to do. I'm going to close right now in just a minute. Hebrews. Chapter 12. Amen. I'm going to preach for just a minute longer. I mean, I could do 12 and 15 and say, looking diligently, least any man fall of the grace of God, lose vision, lose enthusiasm, lose energy. You, you see that? Now, fail. We fail. Fail. Fail what? Fail with accomplishing our vision. Fail. Amen. With doing ministry with enthusiasm. Fail. Amen, with doing ministry with energy. Why? Because at least any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. We fail to do it with vision, with enthusiasm, with energy, because things spring up into our life, amen, and it defiles us, and it defiles those around us. When we lose our vision, when we lose our energy, when we lose our enthusiasm, every person around you loses energy, enthusiasm, and vision. It affects people around you. When you don't have it, they're not going to have it. You ever been at work before? And, man, you just have them on them lazy days. Now, somebody will, come on, man, we got to get it. And you're like, oh, man. Come on, man, we got to get the job done. It's got to be done. It's got to be done today. And they keep, finally, you get up, and you get in rhythm, and you get going with them, and all of a sudden, bam, you're knocking it out. It's moving. And you're like, man, that wasn't too bad of a day once we got after it. You know what I'm saying? But see, the same thing is, if I sit there and drag down, I can drag that other person down. They're like, well, if you ain't going to do nothing, I ain't going to do nothing either. <laughs> I mean, you're going to be lazy. I'm going to be lazy with you, Right? And it can go either way. But see, we are uh, we are the eagle kind. We're the strong kind. We're ready to go. We're the ox kind. Amen. And we need to be saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it with energy. Amen. Why? Because I'm not running on my own energy anymore. Amen. I'm the energizer of money. I got the Holy Ghost power. Amen. That's pushing me. Amen. I can do all things through him. I can do it with enthusiasm. I'm excited. Amen. Because of who he is. And I have a vision that God will change things if I get excited about it. Amen. 
uh, endurance, amen. We have to do it with endurance, amen. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 12. Uh, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh, let us, man, everybody looking at you. <laughs> Listen, some people looking to see you fail. Some people looking to see you succeed. You got one person out here that's looking to see you fail. You got a pastor in his church that's looking to see you succeed. And that's what I want. I want you to get anointed, amen, and scare everybody around you. <laughs> amen. I want you to, amen, be a life changer. Or what, and listen, people say, you know, that, man, I can't change the world. Amen. We can change the world. If all of us would do a little bit, amen, we can change the world. Right? I mean, I don't know how many people we had in here today. Hundred and something people, probably today, you know, not counting the kids, just people in here sitting in, in the seats. Hundred and something people, right? So I got to preach to a hundred and something people. The other day, I had this crazy no-brainer idea. I'm just going to do a video. And I have stayed scared away from that. I've seen a thousand people do it. And I'm like, man, I'm not going to get caught up in all that. You know, I mean, God's called me to preach the word. I'm going to preach the word, you know. But I just decided to send a video out. Just decided to do it. Amen. 1,200 views. So by doing one little thing, that's out of my character, amen, I preached to, you know, 100 and something, and then I preached to 1,200, amen. That's awesome. So there's no telling what we can do. Peter stood there one day, the biggest hypocrite in the church world, and denied God three times. The biggest hypocrite in church. Fifty days later, he preached, and 3,000 souls got saved 50 days later. You don't, we don't know what we can do for God, but we do know that we need to have a vision because if we don't, our church will perish, our family will perish, our classroom will perish, all of it will. But we need to get a vision that God's going to save somebody, God's going to bring somebody in. We need to do it with enthusiasm and energy and endurance. Amen. Let us lay aside every weight in the sin which do us so easily beset us and let us run the race with patience that is set before us. Amen. Listen, there's a time of planting and there's a time of harvest. You know what that time is? It's enduring. It's waiting. You ever watch grass grow or paint dry? <laughs> it's enduring. <laughs> Go out there and sit in the yard one time and watch grass grow. I mean, I've planted before, and I would run out there every day and look to see if anything come up. And then finally, a little green broke through the green. Then you run out there, and finally, it's got about two inches on it. You know, and you're starting to see it grow. That's endurance. That's waiting. There's a time between the planting and the harvesting. And I believe when it comes to the enduring, that's where so many people give up. And they quit, and they lose their enthusiasm. They lose their energy. You know what I'm saying? When you're waiting for the product to come forth, amen, and so many quit right before the harvest. It's right on the verge. It's getting ready to come, and we don't walk out there and look anymore. We don't have the enthusiasm anymore. We don't have the energy anymore. I just give up. If it grows, it grows. If it don't, it don't. I planted it. Forget about it. And I believe so many of us get in that place to where we're just not enduring. We're not enduring. Enduring, see, enduring with a vision, enduring with enthusiasm, and enduring with energy. That's how we got to do it. Amen. The Lord is coming back. He's going to come. Life is but a vapor. It's here for a moment, and then it vanishes. Brother, we are heading, uh, on, we're on a fast train to eternity right now. And all we have to endure to the end, and the same shall be saved. Amen. Endure to the end with enthusiasm, uh, with energy. Amen. And, and I wrote this, and I'm going to close on this. Uh, on this scripture right here, God doesn't re reward results. He rewards 
faithfulness. He didn't say, well, if you do so many and you get so many souls saved, then I will reward you. He said he that win the souls is wise. He rewards faithfulness. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He didn't say he was going to reward you for your results. He's going to reward you for your faithfulness. You doing it with a vision. You doing it with enthusiasm. You doing it with energy. You go to a town and change the whole town when joy is around them. Because why? Because you walked in there. You was a Christian that had enthusiasm. You was a Christian that had a vision that God's still saving souls. You was a Christian that still served God with energy. I mean, man, I, through the years, I've seen so many come and go. So many come and go. So many of you have seen that here yourselves. Why? Because they couldn't endure. They could not endure. They couldn't keep doing it right beside us with energy. They couldn't keep doing it right beside us with enthusiasm. They couldn't keep doing it right beside us, amen, with a vision. Amen, I still got the vision I did day one. My vision ain't changed. God's going to save some souls. God's going to change some lives. I, we're going to preach a gospel that encourages somebody. Amen, God's going to put a family back together. You know why? Because we come to church. Amen, that's exactly right. Because we meet down here, God's going to change some lives. Right? It's still the same thing. My vision ain't changed. Amen. You know all I want to do is on a larger level. That's it. Why? Why you want to do it on a larger level? He'll save more lives. He'll put more families back together. When I go fishing, I catch two. That's a great day. But do I want to catch more? Yes. I'll sit there and keep fishing just thinking I might get one more. You know, I mean, that, that's the thing. Do I want to catch more? Yes, I want to catch more. <laughs> Listen, he said, we toiled all night and we ain't called nothing. Well, drop your net down on the right side of the ship. They dropped it down and took it in, had to call some more boats over there. Why? Because they still had a desire to fish. They still had to do what the Lord wanted them to do. Listen, God ain't through yet. God still got to fill the whole boat up and us call more boats over to get the residual of what we have. Why would we lose vision? Why would we lose enthusiasm? Why would we lose energy when we know God still fills boats? Amen? Amen. So, this is going to be my altar call. We're going to pray that God will give us a renewed vision. We're going to pray that God will help us to do and carry out that vision, amen, with enthusiasm. That God will give us the energy to do it. And that we can endure until it is accomplished. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to pray corporally. 